Hey, everybody. Today on NSFW, we're joined for an in-depth and definitive interview with Ali Spagnola. She has a big, fat Indiegogo. It's going to take her all around the world. Get on the train, kids. Woo-hoo! It's NSFW time. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for NSFW is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is NSFW episode 163, recorded on January 28th, 2013. Drinking for Justice. This episode of NSFW Show is brought to you by Pond5, the world stock media marketplace. If you're a media maker looking for video, photos, illustrations, music, sound effects, after effects, templates, or 3D models, check out Pond5. And for an exclusive 50 free stock media files, go to pond5.com slash NSFW. Ting is a new mobile service that makes sense. Save money with Ting. Pay for what you use. It doesn't require a contract and offers unlimited devices on one pooled plan. To save $25 of your first Ting device, visit NSFWTing.com. That's NSFWTing.com. <laughs> Close it up for me. That was almost majestic, and that's all I asked for, because it is go time for NSFW. Woo! The new shoe, the new shoe, the new shoe for your web feet. The new show for the webernets, the show that is nominally safe for work. Howdy, beautiful people. It's Brian Brushwood, uh, your humble host, joined as always by my BFF and better dressed other, better dressed other, BDO. Justin Robert Young, what's going on, JRY? Uh, Brian, I'll tell you what. I feel like I just stepped off a Zeppelin bound for Yugoslav. What do you mean? Uh, it means that I'm well dressed and I'm in a place that's by and large crack. <laughs> So you okay? So you're saying that? Uh, see, because I thought like you noticed that that entry, entry uh, just got sent into us. Look at this. This looks like some kind of damned awards ceremony, some kind of fancy pants BS. And then I cut yeah. to you wearing the freaking uh, uh, penguin suits. You look amazing. Yes. Well, there's a lot of things going on, uh, and I want everybody to be aware of them. But chief among them is that we're doing. Uh, Really, I, to, to peel back the curtain a little bit, me and Brian decided, let's stop bringing people on that we can have a good interview with yes. and then making them do 14 different mini oh, yeah, games that, that, that we don't explain the rules to them. Right. And we aren't really good at playing. And also we came up with 30 minutes ago. Yes. That so was, let's just have a good interview. That was what we called uh, the, uh, well, well, but the whole thing, because in the beginning there was, hey man, we're on Twitch. We're legit now. We could do like real interviews. So we got Mark, Mark Marin on, who was awesome. He was a great interview. And the whole time, Freaking chat realm is howling at the bottom, like boring. Where's the game? Why aren't Why aren't somebody making a joke about why? How come nobody's vomited yet? And so they were like, you know what? Chat realm wants the games, so we did the games. And then there's other times we had people on. We tried to force them into games, and uh, yeah, we we're like, we should have done an interview. Well. The other problem is that Mark Marin is great at interviewing. Yes, I do not know how great he is in, as an interview because I've like seen other interviews with him and he's not been great. Long story short, we are going to do episodes now where we're going to have funny interviews and everyone's going to like them because they're going to be natural and interesting and hilarious. And the first of them is someone for whom we've had on uh, many, many times. In fact, I feel like there it was, it was a real love at first sight between this show and her career. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I said today on Twitter, 
the voice of an inappropriately day drunk generation, Ali Spagnola. Woo! Hello. What's going on, Ali? How you been? Uh, I've been awesome. Thanks. Do you nice feel like I've you been? Guys. I've been rad. I've been amazing. I've been incredible. I've been all of the things that are better than you. So, okay. So since we last saw you, not that you would, you would never say, you would never think those things. Uh, when we last saw you, uh, you were still embroiled. Would you ever think those things though, Allie? Can totally we just is. clear that up? Jamie, I don't know. She totally, <laughs> she totally is thinking it right now. Uh, <laughs> okay. So uh, when we last saw you, you, you didn't never seem to want to talk about it because it was an ongoing court battle. But then freedom won. Tell, to explain to the nice people at home what's going on. Yeah, I mean, I didn't want to discuss it at the time because I was still in the middle of the battle. But now it's over. Uh, I at the beginning it was uh, this guy named Steve Roos was trying to stop me from playing my power hours, and he was getting other people shut down online too. And so I've been fighting him for the past three years, and I just finally got the court verdict, and we won. Okay, now there, there's a few details okay. that that people always yeah, it seems like they all ask the same question. Really? Let's rewind this way the f back. By the way, can we can we very, very, very real kidding. quick? Can we make a drinking game out of this, Justin? Every time there's an amazing insight, you take a drink. Like every time, every time there's like a bomb dropped, you go and down some of the some of the go go juice. Okay, but I'm only gonna do it on this condition, Brian. What? That you're the arbiter of it, and you play the ding dong sound. I'll find a ding dong sound. Somebody will have it in the chat realm in about three seconds, and I will play it. That or maybe that Inception button. You know what? I'm going to find the Inception button. That's what I'll press. Go ahead. Okay. Take it away. Ali, uh, and and for those of you who who have followed this or are interested in Ali and the Power Hour and everything, you really really need to go to her website. She wrote this fantastic blog post that goes over a lot of these details. But there's things that I wanted to touch on. Uh, about how you came into doing the Power Hour, because as you stated in your blog post, you uh, had, had uh, written it and it had been like on a DVD, and that's how you came into contact with this guy. But but bring us back to the very the very beginning of when you were like, I want to write sixty original songs for for a Power Hour. Like, what gave you that idea, and what made you want to market it? Yeah, well, I was playing non-drinking music, and it's tough to get people to give a crap about that. I mean, I'm sorry, I, miss, I missed the shows. thing you said at the very beginning. It's it's hard. You, what, what kind of music was it? Um, it's like guitar, guitar rock. It was just like strummy white girl crap. Non, non something. <laughs> it was like non something music. Non oh, non alcoholic music, maybe. That's your first. That's your first big reveal. That there. Um, <laughs> All right, go ahead. You were saying. So anyway, it was pretty much a chore to get people to show up. And so I wanted my shows to be more like a party. So uh, I, I was already playing power hours with my friends and I just turned my concerts into power hours. And then once I invited them to my party instead of my concert, it was way more fun. Okay, but, but okay, so you uh, make up the songs so that you, you have the idea for the event. And then I assume you go and you write all the music just, you know, tailor made for it. You do your first ones. I assume, like at first, they're rough sketches. You just thought, like, "Hey, I got this vague idea. I hear kind of the the songs." And then you start to, as you perform, I assume many of the rituals start to shape up, and you start to realize you're onto something, right? Yeah, basically, the first I had even a, like a, I'd say an acoustic album out before that was my rough sketches. Basically, that was just the stuff that I had performed live and sort of work together and and now I mean now the stuff that's on the shot glass USB is very much more polished but it started out being really rough okay give me the moment when you had this career as white girl uh strummy guitar rock and then you were the power hour girl when you realized that this drinking game I uh, come to my party instead of coming to my show thing was way better than your previous life as white girl strummy guitar person. Give that, me that moment, moment was the first power hour show I played and the line went around the building, whereas it was like two people and me at a cafe when it used to be at my shows. And, and like, as soon as like it blew up the first time, I was like, yep, this is it. I need drunk music. Now, why why drunk music? Like, like, like I mean, because there's a billion gimmicks, right? Like there, you could be the one who talks about death or, or you know, you could... Uh, find some boyfriend and pretend like your brother and sister. Like there's a jillion <laughs> different gimmicks that you could have to be a rock person. Why drinking? Uh, because it wasn't just, it was not about the drinking and it was about the party and the fact that it was interactive. I mean, I could have, 
it could have been any game, right? As long as my concert is getting people involved and people, you know, interacting together and getting people really excited, like that's what it was about. It just so happened that drinking is also a blast. <laughs> Sorry, you were saying. Brian, come on. We got to slow down on these. I don't know what you're talking about. This is going to be yeah, an I'm amazing... I'm on wine. That's stronger than you guys. Come on. <clears throat> well, maybe maybe one of us was pre Also, I want to do one Alley episode where either me or you can remember the end of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Alley. So everything's hunky-dory. You realize you've got the Midas touch. Everything you touch turns to booze that you have to drink once per minute for 60 minutes straight. A very peculiar form of superpower you have. But rather than fight crime with the superpower, you decide to make the power hour. And uh, power hour, of course, being a generic term, you figure what? Like, like this is the equivalent of saying rock party? Like, just uh, there couldn't possibly be a downside to this name? Right, exactly. It was basically like, come play poker. No one's going to stop me from using that term. That, that, it didn't even cross my mind. I knew I was always worried about a lawsuit with my power hour, but I certainly didn't think it would be from trademarks. So, okay, so yeah. you're thinking, you're thinking this whole time that it's going to be, you know, basically like a liability concern, because when you hear about something, like I always heard it as the Century Club, which a hundred shots for a hundred minutes sounded like dangerous, like crazy, like, but then a power hour seemed like sensible. And in some cases, <laughs> if you're wrong, if you're, hear me out, if you're rocking like, you know, 50 Bud Selects, 55s or whatever, those, the, those half beers. Like, in that case, almost disappointing. Like, you barely catch a buzz doing the power hour. Well, what? great. I'm glad that you think that's wussy because then it makes me seem responsible. That's You're very responsible. That's good. Come on, man. It's like, um, oh, man, I, I was about to go way in. Wait, was that your question? That you are the are, you are the, the mascot for a sissy drinking game? No, no. I felt like your question didn't end in a question, but instead an accusation. My, my, <laughs> you know what, you're this right. This is why we can't do interviews, Brian. No, we can't, we can't. No, look. It's like you're the guy wearing a tuxedo. I'm the guy wearing a T-shirt with a gun on it, and we ask questions. Uh, listen, okay, so everything's off to a, to a good start. No time gun. Questions, <laughs> When do you suspect that you might, how did you enter into a uh, business relationship of whatever size with Professor Asshat, and when did things go sour? Uh, I entered into a relationship with him on uh, a business relationship that was actually friendly to start out with. He initially like messaged me through YouTube, and then we were emailing, but he was saying lovely things like, I love your music, and he also made a power hour, and he was going to sell my power hour on his site. And so we actually started working together. I signed a contract with him that he would help manufacture my DVD that I was just making by hand, and he was also going to take it to Spencer's Gifts and other retailers to help me out. Um, so that was cool. We were buddies. Well, okay, so no, now... No. Okay, Wait, hold on. Wait, what form of the Power Hour is there now? In this point in the story, what is the Power Hour physically that you would sell? Right, I was selling a CD that was like an acoustic version that's it was pretty darn crappy compared to what I have now. And um, a DVD that was just me singing to the camera and like really low quality. I, can we hear some of it? Can you? No, can, you, can I don't even have it, honestly. What? No, I don't I know, believe you for sorry. a second. It's like, okay, you are saying those words, but in your mind and in your heart, you're thinking of a particular crate in your garage right now. Don't look at me and say you honestly don't know where they are. No, it's not about that. I, I have no way of playing it for you. No mm. joke. These things were handmade and stamped on. I'm sorry. This sounds like this sounds like an eBay. I, hold on, let me just. Uh... It's also thoroughly embarrassing. I'm sure you can find them. There were like two people that bought them that were really into it. All right. <laughs> so wait, no wait. So you're like recording it for a webcam, like, or do you like what kind of camera? Like, it's just you. It's like a personal. And like and that seems like one of those things that you'd see in like the early '90s, where it's like, like now you can bring your favorite artist into your house, like, <laughs> like look at somebody singing for you on a television. <laughs> yes, it was the height of technology back then. So okay, so, so when is this? When is this? Give us a year. Um, 2009. Yeah, wow. so not that long ago. It's just as like 20 minutes ago in, in <laughs> geological eras. I mean, this is amazing. So, okay, so you put this thing out there. You think everything's going up like, hey, I want to get ahead. I got an idea. This guy, who obviously is already established, seems to know something about business, thinks I have an idea. Let's work together because we're both, you know, selling things that are awesome. 
Right. Yeah. And it was great. And then for nine months, he was selling my DVD and he never went to talk, talk to anyone um, to put it in stores. And he, I never saw sales or money from sales from him, although I doubt that they were that good because, you know, my DVD was crappy. And then like a week after I had talked to him all friendly, like he emails me a cease and desist letter that says that I can no longer make power hours. Okay. So at this point, Really wanted to click the button just then, Justin. Not gonna lie. Uh, you know, at this point, anyway. no, not gonna. Have, you've okay. You've drunk of your own accord on that on that <laughs> moment. Uh, so you get this cease and desist, and you think it's a joke, or are you confused because you're on well, working how, how relationship. Do you find it out? Yeah. Well, when like I got it, I was just like, oh, we can letter? we can talk through this. This is really weird. I don't know why he's acting like this. This is my buddy. Like, let's. Let's work it out. Let's talk. And it, he was not having it. It was just like barrage of cease and desist sent to me from every way possible. Contact form on my website, YouTube, Facebook, just like evil. Now, okay. That, <laughs> so the you're like you're like the, the step parents in Harry Potter. Like these letters are just coming in from any and all <laughs> premise. Yes, she also had a child under the uh, stairs. She forgot to mention that. And that child was the power hour. <laughs> so, okay, so so you are trying to work things out. He keeps shutting you down. And then, uh, like, at what point do you, uh, did he get the trademark for power hour, like, while you guys were working together? Was it like he finally nabbed this and he just wanted to shut off? He was drunk with power? Yep, that's it. He was <laughs> He was actually given the trademark, which was BS. He never should have been. And the and the reason, of course, is because oh, okay, it's okay. it's too well, common. A I'm so I'm so I'm, I'm stuck in in the moment where there is this massive betrayal. Like, what what is, you know, like, like do you like? Because there, there's has to be levels of where you are emotionally on whether or not you want to continue. How serious this guy is. Like, you're checking your own bank statement on like. I mean, like, what can I do physically, you know, financially to stop this? Like, like, what is your initial estimation of what this problem is and what you can do about it? Right. My initial estimation was like, oh, well, OK, fine. I mean, he's not going to reason with me, but there's, like, I'll just let him try and take me to court because it's BS. But except that he actually got my stuff taken down, like my DVD was off of Amazon because of him. He, he kept threatening he's going to, to iTunes, which was my biggest source of distribution. He had talked to uh youtube he'd gotten other people's software and websites taken down so it was like i can't just like stop i can't wait for him to come at me because so, so this is a case where um because of the current structure it's not worth it for itunes or amazon or any of these institutions to uh play judge of what is and isn't a violation of copyright their position is if they got somebody making a claim and especially if they could show a piece of legal paperwork that says i own this trademark they're going to take it down, and that's the end of the discussion, right? Right. Yeah. So, and he had the power to do that, and so he just went at it. Yeah. Tra uh, how much? How much are you making from it at this point? Like, like at the point you get the cease and desist letter, how much in your monthly income is the power hour? Oh, it's certainly not keeping me alive. It was basically nothing. It was more about trying to get my music out there to get people excited about it, as opposed to income. So this is like your passion. It's like. Which is more important than if it was just like, oh, I do the fart song, and uh, you're gonna enforce the. Are fart you saying I can't be passionate about fart songs? If there's uh, unfortunately, there's always going to be like a weird pause after the uh, the uh, revelation button gets pressed as we all drink. No, that's that's Brian. That's an interactive element of this show. <laughs> They're drinking when we're drinking. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, so, so this is like, like literally, like your anger and your because oh, this is something that, like, oh my goodness, is this what I think it is? Is yeah, this that's the, it. This is the original DVD taken down because of Steve Roos. Oh, and it does. It says video currently uh, unavailable. So it was on what Amazon Instant. You could download it and play it instantly. Originally, you could watch it immediately and get drunk as soon as you wanted. Oh man! And now, and then that guy took it down. Why yeah. isn't it back? Yeah, <laughs> because I got a better one now. Oh, well, no, yeah. I want that one. Yeah, the original. Yeah, can yes. we can we make it an exclusive? I'll tell you what. You keep your current best-selling DVD. You keep all your fans. You keep your whole operation set free. Give us the really crappy old one and let us slap on NSFW. Yeah, NSFW presents. We'll label it the original Ali Spagnola's Power Hour <laughs> Drinking Game.
then we definitely won't take you to court. We like pinky swear on that. <laughs> I'll tell you what, oh, in the meantime, right now, you know what I notice is there's only one customer review on it. Well, that doesn't seem right. It seems like there oh. should be more. <laughs> it seems uh, like that, that is a waste of time. <laughs> it just I'm just saying, it just doesn't seem like there should be only one review on this. There is better I use mean, of chat saying. realm's energy. <laughs> I'm just saying. It, people should probably, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people watched it. More people than, than you even think, Allie. And they should all leave reviews. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying, like, it is an incorrect, it's currently broken because you know, it is. I think you should have them inter or review my shot glass USB that is also on Amazon. That would be much more helpful. You know what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's not as funny. Hold on. This is, this is what I love about it. It's FW. It's like there's what you say with your mouth and there's what you say with your eyes. And what you said was like, you know what would be more helpful <laughs> is please review my USB shot glass. Your eyes were like. MF or Brian, don't you do this. Don't you get everybody reviewing with five stars my old crappy DVD. You, if you're going to move them to anything, you put it on the USB drive. And uh, I agree. Oh, good. All this right. looks like you're no at the does. point. <laughs> Go ahead. You are, you are at the point where I'm going to try to ask a question and drink at the same time. You are at the point where uh, you now have made the decision that you are going to half to fight this, what is your first move? Like, like what, what's the first thing you do? Yeah, well, the reason I decided that I was gonna fight this is because it was on Reddit and people went nuts over it. It was on the front page and people were so supportive. So like, that I decided that like, I should do a Kickstarter kind of thing because if there was so much support, like I, it would be awesome to go through with it. And, Who put you know, it on Reddit? Did you put it on Reddit? So, what's that? Who put it on Reddit? Did you put it on Reddit? Some random person put Hold it on, on Reddit? Uh, wait, 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 real quick. Uh, Justin, you're wearing the tuxedo. I'm afraid I'm going to need you to be more accusatory when you ask, did you put it on Reddit? Get, try it again. Take it from the top. Okay, uh, here we go. And take two. Did you put it on Reddit? <laughs> I did not. Another guy that was getting his power hour shut down did. Oh, no kidding. So you yeah. were just collateral damage in there. Hmm? And so, and so at some point... It's collateral damage. It had to be like collateral hugs. <laughs> no, no, no. This is like where... Well, just in the middle of like a big hug. And you, you're like, oh, you were in this... You were in the midst of this tragedy. One of many people killed in the crossfire or under, under fire in the crossfire. There was a fire that was very cross with another fire over something. I got nothing. Exactly. Uh, uh, but the important thing is, so, okay. David they, Cross got lit on fire. So, you're trying or, to say. originally, this was not Ali Spagnola's fight. This was, who's this asshat that thinks he owns the phrase power hour? Right. And and so, at this point, when does it occur to you, to, like, somebody's got to step up and get embroiled in a years-long legal battle that will cost five digits of, of hard-won income uh, and leave you... Uh, with nothing but a lot of goodwill from the internet. <laughs> like, at what point does this become, like, I will be, I will step up and fight this fight? Well, at first, it didn't seem to be five digits. Like, I talked to a lawyer about it, and he was like, eh, 5,000, 10,000, maybe 15 at most. And so I was like, well, I mean, I guess that's reasonable if it's lower and I can raise money. And I did. I raised $5,000. So that was awesome. Um, once I started getting into it, though, it was like, well, I can't stop after spending all that. So... Yeah, you once once you tri once you dip a toe in the uh, the goodwill of righteous retribution, you can't you know just be like not so interested. Thanks. Right now, you you are part of this Reddit thing that goes on the front page. You find that there's all the support of people who are like, "This is total hosiery uh, BS." You guys need to fight it. You decide at that point to start a Kickstarter for your your legal fund that raises five thousand dollars. Is that correct? Yeah, well, Kickstarter actually rejected me because you can't raise money for legal funds on Kickstarter. Yeah, no, I found that out. There's a Kickstarter, and, and this is part of what's brilliant about Kickstarter, but also a total boner in the ear hole, is that they, uh, they, they've they got a very specific vision for what they want all their things to be. They want it to be some kind of visionary BS, uh, and that I want to make a thing, it's always been my dream. And then they make, you know, and then they say like, you have to have a thing at the end of it. So it's like they've got a giant list of things they won't allow. Uh, when we wanted to launch scam stuff, you know, right. it's basically, which which I would say is a thing, but it specifically says 
if what you want to do is raise money for an online business, then forget about it. We won't approve it. So we had to go with in Indiegogo instead. Is that what you did? Um, they didn't, Indiegogo didn't exist back then, I don't think, or I didn't know about it. It was 2009. So I basically built Kickstarter on my own WordPress website. What? That's amazing. Yeah. Wait. I mean, it was just a series of uh, PayPal buttons and me sort of like cataloging stuff with a, an Excel sheet. That's awesome. Uh, well, I'm sorry. You invented Can Kickstarter. Can you show us the Excel sheet? <laughs> <laughs> Prove it. Mm. That's amazing, right. man. Now, Thanks. You get the money in. And now you're you're in. You've been drafted into the army of I'm gonna fight this battle because now you've got uh, money in the bank to do it. Uh, you have to be committed to it. Now, what are you doing for a day job at at this point? And and how much is like like where is on the pie chart of your life at that point? How much is dealing with this craziness, and how much of it is like working for a living? Yeah, I would say 99% of it was working for a living. It, it didn't take a lot of my time or energy. It was like a lot of money and like occasionally talking to my lawyer and then him submitting documents and then a ton of waiting. So it's not like I was working really hard for three years. Yeah. It was, you know. So this is like the world's crappiest kind of hobby. <laughs> yeah, some yes. people crochet. I go and file legal briefs. Now, it should be pointed out that the legal nature of this is because you were dealing with what some people might call harassment, you had an individual who who vowed to shut you down no matter where you tried to sell your stuff as long as you used the word power hour. Technically, you were not defending your trade, your ability to use it against him. The, because he had the trademark, no matter how ill-gotten it was, it was incumbent upon you to be the, the uh, aggressor, the, the plaintiff. You had to file suit against him, which means there's no possible scenario where you could get the defendant to cover your legal costs. Correct. Yeah, because the Trademark Trial and Appeal Board didn't do a Google search before they issued that, and none of them were any fun. Honestly, we should go there. We should campaign to go there and, and play a power hour with the Trademark Appeal Board because clearly they're not living well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, uh, but but uh, at what point, like, do you know this Hold going on, into it? Ryan. I'll tell you what, there's a lot of people right now that are listening to this stirring tale, and they're like, God damn it, not only should this be a movie, but I need to make this a movie my own goddamn self. Yes. And I'm like, well, you want to know what? It's going to look like a pile of poop unless you got some high-quality graphics and B-roll and sounds and vector <laughs> illustrations. That's why you got to head on down to pond5.com. Oh, you my heard God. me. There's five ponds here, and we're going to give you all of them, dot .com <laughs> style. <laughs> uh, look, I, if I, if, I'm, I don't claim to speak just D's as a native language, but it seems to me like what you're trying to say is that Pond5 is the ultimate stock media marketplace where you can get all kinds of everything from vector illustration, sound effects, music, copyright free photos, and high quality video content that you can put royalty free into whatever uh, stuff you put together, right? I mean, number one, absolutely, Brian, you're totally right. Name me another stock media marketplace that even touches it. Singapore? Bangkok, uh, but, Milwaukee, um, get out of here with that jive nonsense. You got to head on down to Pond 5. Number one, it's not a physical place. It's on the internet. So you can access it literally anywhere in the world. Yeah, no, we, we ran, into, we ran into this. China. No, there, we got a letter from a very angry Taiwanese boy who explained that he went to five ponds of his choosing. And upon reaching the fifth pond, he threw money in the wishing well. And that uh, in a, and he a, didn't get... An aerial shot. Of a gorilla. Of, yes, correct. That's exactly what happened. And so we, we we must explain. It's not wizard powers. This is, there's a lot of confusion Don't about that. Don't be like that poor Asian boy. <laughs> His name was so, In fact, I almost. Just, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop. That shouldn't be their slogan. Uh, so okay, what what should the code they use be? Okay, the code they should use is you want to go on over to pond5.com slash NSFW. What they're going to do at that point is go ahead and just, you know, they're, they're going to go ahead and crack open a bunch of these things for free for 50, you. 50 free clips, and I'll tell you what, we've, we've said this before, we'll say it again. Anyone who uses 
even one, use whatever you want. Use one of those free 50 clips, put it in a funny little 30 second video. You go to the front of the line, my son. You, my son, who I will never, I will disclaim and I will claim, uh, like, you can't be my son. I demand a DNA test if you're going to say I'm your son. Pond five never claimed to be my progeny. Why should you? So the important thing is <laughs> paternity suits. Um, make a video. You immediately go to the front of the line, and you could be right here on NSFW. Uh, just, <laughs> just go like to nutspace.com slash NSFW. Yes. Apparently, I can't make there sons as Pond people like five, listen. You're all creative people, or at least you keep telling me. <laughs> so do things. Do you know what's amazing about Pond5? Look at this. Here, I'll tell you what. Even if you don't want to make something for us, at least go out and find us the weirdest thing on Pond5. Whoever can bring us the weirdest thing gets a shout-out live on the air. On the air. Uh, this is Ein, is the winner of this week's competition, who brought us a picture of a banana wearing a condom. Available now. Your photo of a banana. Hey, how many times, Justin, have you been like, I need a photo, not a video, not a sound effect, but I need a photo of a banana wearing a condom? Because we all have videos and sound effects of me, but like the, the, the photo is really where you want to go. Uh, Ali, let me ask you a question. On a scale of one to five, how erotic is that image to you? Uh, I'm actually going to say a six because I'm the one who submitted that to Pond5. So go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> she brings you up a very good Ellie? point. That's such a great goddamn point. Because, because Pond5 is a multimedia marketplace where people can provide content. They have some of the best rates in the industry. 50% commissions available at Pond5 because Allie went out, grabbed her stuff. She said, you know what? I bet there's money in people throwing a condom on a banana, taking a picture of it. But a bing, sold it, Pond5. Money in the bank. How's it going for you? It's going fabulously. See? That's what it's about. You should see what I did with the rest of the bunch. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, Wait. There. Okay, go ahead. So you are now at the beginning of what will eventually become an arduous legal battle which will define your online internet character. Uh, what did you expect? If, you, if I were to go back in time and talk to Ali just as uh, you, are, you are lawyering up and getting ready to fight this battle, and I were to ask her how long this will take, how long would you have thought it would have taken? I would have thought it had been a few months, and I thought we would get through it pretty speedy. Like uh, 5,000, 10,000 was like a high estimate, and my lawyer obviously said that he doesn't really know, but I had high hopes that this would go very quickly. But now, at what point do you start to think that, like, whoa, maybe this is harder than we thought? Like like uh, the first time, because because you were saying this guy, uh, Larry McAsshat, would, would just make all these evasive moves, paperwork to tie stuff up and delay motions. Right, yeah, that's when I started thinking, like, holy crap, this may suck a whole lot more than I expected. It was when he was not showing up for stuff, and then we required my lawyer to submit more things to make him show up, that kind of stuff. So, I mean, like, this is like, and just for people, this might be elementary to some people, but, like, uh, lawyers are not, like, mercenaries or hitmen. You can't just say, go do this problem and pay them a flat fee, and then they go do it. Like... You, like, every time that that dude doesn't show up, it's like, oh, good God. That means I have to pay for that lawyer until the next time that there's a thing. And also, there's going to be another thing. And it's like, uh, like, uh, oof, that's per hour I got to pay that, eh? Yeah, it's per hour. And it ended up being like, if he'd email me once, and that'd be like 50 bucks for an email. Wait, for him to email you? Yeah, then that's so that's why I was in the dark for a lot of this too, because I wasn't able to ask him questions or it would cost me fifty dollars just for one answer. You know what? I actually What if you were to send a raven like in Game of Thrones? How much <laughs> did that cost? <laughs> that uh, would probably take him longer, so it would cost a hundred bucks. A, a friend yeah. of mine actually got dark this. Dark wings, dark words. 
<laughs> a friend of mine actually had this happen to him where his uh, he does a lot of contract negotiations or whatever, and he works with a certain lawyer. And at one point, uh, he got a very sweetly written uh, Christmas card from his lawyer. And no lie, in January, the following month, he got a bill for the 15 minutes that it took for him to write the thing. Like, it was just uh, like somehow something got reported. <laughs> and so he automatically got billed for the note that he wrote. It was like 100 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. Uh, here, I mean, like, can you Snapchat a lawyer? Like, what if you just wrote like a legal question ah, on dude, your genitals and go, like took a picture of it? Go to go to Fiverr.com. Just say I will. I will yeah. give two thirds of an answer to any legal question for five dollars, and then it's just getting it. Bleep, bleep. The uh, uh, from Padre S J. Fapper the dolphin can't do without this. I know what you're thinking. Why do I need a USB shot glass? And you know what? You're, I wonder that thing, if you're thinking this thing were anything other than a thing that came from the thoughts of Ali Spaggs. Let me tell you. <laughs> First of all, can I point out, that, do you know who Padre S.J. is, Ali? I do not. He's a Jesuit priest. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and, uh, and, and one of our favorite members of chat realm. Let me tell you what this is by first telling you what it's not. It's not a container with a one removable one gigabyte flash drive. It's not a super durable drinking game. It's not an artfully designed shot glass. It's not a bonus that you get along with 60 minutes of pure tit stick madness. I mean, it's all those things as sure as I'm ski cheating. <laughs> but it's also far more. This product is perfect gift for the aspiring drinking game master, a way to combine your love of music with your enjoyment of distilled spirits. More importantly, it's great big pustini. Pustini! That's a Steve Roos who tried to fail to legally troll Miss Bags out of giving you the gift of a power hour. Buy this now, because if you don't, Iron Sockman will disown you, and also you prove that you hate America. I don't know about you, but that was helpful to me. Click. <laughs> and then swap to this. Okay, so when do you start to see a light at the end of the tunnel? Hold on, hold on. Before we get any further with any of this, uh, let's get to the really important part, which is Ali Spagnola is currently running Indiegogo. Get the URL out for that so anybody yeah, who's watching right now or listening later can donate to this because this is actually going on right now. Where can you go, Ali? Indiegogo.com slash power hour. Banana cup. Oh no, that's not that's not the site. No, oh, that's, <laughs> oh, that's a banana with a condom on it. What I a got, silly I get banana some, that is. Indiegogo.com slash what? Power hour. Power hour. Will you please put a picture of a banana with a condom on it in there? Okay, so now I noticed on here, we, we're just in the early days of this thing. So you got lots of time here, but you're at uh, 9000 out of $40,000 goal. Wait, where did you come up with the $40,000 goal? Uh, I would like to hit 20 different cities, and I think that it's going to be around $2,000 each if I'm going to be traveling there with all my equipment and a friend. See, oh, see, now we had like a private side bed. I was convinced that this number was your $30,000 sunk cost that you spent to defend the freedom of drinkers everywhere, plus a modest $10,000 to cover a tour to celebrate. Right. Yeah, no, I mean, it's not, <laughs> it's, uh, I figure that $30,000 is gone and I can't be asking people for that. And yeah. 10000 is not enough to be traveling for as much that I want to travel. No, for as many, uh, well, 40 if shows. I ask people for that $30,000. You, you think I should have? No, I think I should. I'm no. going to take up your debts. <laughs> well, so okay, so uh, question at this point: How many how many cities have you gotten a positive response from? Like you're almost definitely going to because I noticed you got a current votes per city on here. Uh, I notice Austin's doing all right. That's pretty good. Yeah, nice. uh, so, I mean, chances are I'll be hitting New York. I've got uh, Australia and UK are actually showing what? having a good showing. That's amazing. Germany. Who knew that the Germans were drinkers? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, was that a surprise to you that you had international fans? I actually was surprised, yeah. But, I mean, I guess it makes sense. They're all English speakers, that, and I hear that English speakers do like their booze. Yeah, I believe that. I get a lot of people from uh, Scam School. Uh, you busted open number two? Yeah. Uh, I get a lot of uh, Scam School fans who are in the UK, and, and that's one of the places I've always thought that my ludicrous magic show would do really well, but I've never had the chance to make it over there. What kind of things you go there together. 
Have you, dude? Have you have you ever performed in England or overseas? Oh. I've been there, but not performed. Oh my god! This is look. If you need an opening act, you'll be what? the main. You're the main event, and it's like no. just no. No, I'm serious. I'm good for like 25 minutes, and then and then I'm nothing. So let, let me open for you. And this Man, is. I'll tell you what, guys. I feel like there's like we're like one act away. Like uh, in our chat roamy kind of world, we're like one act away from doing like five cities in the UK. Dude. Okay. So like like a, a, a traveling tour. Like Ooh. NSFW show, the Brian Magic show, the Ali Spagnola <laughs> Power Hour. And then I'd be like, we're like, we're just, we need to need one more thing. So, okay. So what, what, what should it be? Should it be like, just should it be a juggler? Uh, should it be... <laughs> <laughs> Should it be uh uh man, I don't know. I got nothing. I'm I'm looking well, at no, the I'm, chat I'm saying like I don't know who it is, but like maybe I don't know. Maybe it'll come to us. All right. Let, let's get let's get back to the story. So right. I think it yes. should be Hannah Hart. She's going on tour and I've been trying to get in touch with her. Wait, you know the girl yeah, who does well, my drunk kitchen? Oh, I didn't know her name was Hannah Hart. Yeah, of course. Yeah. She could she could cook. Yes, I don't know. That would be really weird in a live well, show. Well, she's on tour. Like, she's doing no, she's Indiegogo just like mine where people vote on where she should go and she's collecting money to but, basically hit but the it, same amount. Hold on. Is she, is she, like, showing up at, like, like giant arenas and cooking in front of everyone? No, or is she she's doing... All right, so she's doing, like, venues, but she's also a singer. So, like, she's, like, going to sing and talk to people, and then she's also in every city she's going to go to, she's going to find the person who either gave the most or, or whatever... And like do a my drug kitchen in their kitchen and have a good time. And by the way, she's raised unlimited money. If if we could fix the the federal deficit, if Hannah Hart was just like, hey everybody, let's pay into the federal deficit, that would be you would you'd have it done in three seconds apparently, because all she does is print money out of her kitchen. Holy cow! Yeah, I'm taking a peek over here. That's not right. I mean, I mean, it's, it's good good for her. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. I think we should add, I, make her our fourth act. Let's go Twitter bomber and get her to, to pay yes, attention to us. No, I think they, at that point we're roadies. Like that's not like us adding a fourth act. That's like <laughs> we go to work for her. She's like, hey, we're here. They're like, well, what can you do? We do a comedy show. We do magic, and we and we do a concert. We're like, great. Can you move those trucks? And we're like, yeah, we can. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> great. Can you get people drunk for me? Yeah, They're I like, can. Sure. We can we can we can sell merch or anything. You got it, dude. Uh, all right. So you are you're you're in the middle of this of this legal thing now. You had mentioned that like it, it used to be kind of like a ninety nine to one percent hobby, but uh, at what point does the, the does things change and and you decide that you want to do like the USB? Like it seemed like there was a, a switch that flipped where you wanted to take this more seriously as opposed to just fighting this kind of in the shadows. Yeah, well, it started costing a ton of money, and I was like, oh, it's like so much work to input into this. I might as well be doing it for a reason. So I started like redoing my acoustic album into something really polished, and then it developed in the shot glass USB thing because I didn't want to just sell it on a crappy CD that nobody buys anymore. I'll tell you what, Justin, I'm so on the same wavelength with this, like, one more act, and we've got the tour, the NSFW Touring Roadshow. No, it's, 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 it's like you're on to something here. We just got to figure out what that what that thing is. Wait, I thought this was the setup for you to show, like, a Photoshop or something. No, no. <laughs> We're going to have, like, me. Skeletor with, this like, is, no, this is me. Yours heads or something. Like. This is me, like, like, my face is looking like this. But in my mind, it's all uh, like like it's it's the real like I'm just okay the way she's drinking. Hold on. Um, like I mean, it's uh, dude, it's it's you're really onto something, and I, I suspect that the chat room would be into it. I think I think that number one, I think we should do a national tour. I've said to you for a while that I think we should do a U.S. tour. Maybe we can we can <gasps> partner with Ali and we do that. And we do that. But let's all right. Get set, go, Jelly let's D. Table that. We're doing an interview. God That's, damn it. All right. I'm sorry. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. The future is way more interesting than this interview. I, no, 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 no. Well, I mean, I'm just let's just put it out there. Let's just get the rest. Possum Posse no, joins no, no, us. No, no, no. Because here's what I want to know. Like, I, I, it seems like this entire story. And tell me if I'm wrong. That this entire story is you deciding 
that the easier way is just to kind of deal with it conventionally, but the better way is to deal with it in a more like rock star fu kind of manner. And you, the place that you are now, where you're asking for forty thousand dollars to go on a, a national tour, possibly international tour, to drink with random people with this awesome album, is this like a series of not unfortunate like Todd Margaret, uh, Todd Margaret, but rather insanely awesome events where you just said F you instead of dealing with some random assholes uh fart toots. And <laughs> and I, I'm really inspired by the fact that like at every turn can I, can you I just made say, the awesome decision. Can I just say for the record, this interview is going so well. And the more we drink, the better it's going. Like we are sounding so cogent and so right on point. When you looked at her and said this guy's fart toots, it was like it was like Hugh Downs, just right there, utter pro. It was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but answer the question, Allie. <laughs> uh, yeah, of course I'm going to take a rock star attack at this. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I don't know. Okay, so, so bring us up to speed. So you go ahead and you rock star this. You fight the fight and you make it happen. You launch the Indiegogo. And I said something about this in the pre-show. I'm going to go ahead and bust it out right now. You may not like this. But uh, I was a little bit annoyed and how two-faced Reddit was to you. Because I watched yeah. as you submitted, hey, guys, I do a power hour drinking game. It's pretty cool. And then, like, someone's like, self-promotion, thumbs down, as Reddit is wont to do. And then you're like, uh, you're like, oh, well, maybe uh, maybe I shouldn't have phrased it that way. You're like, And then you, 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 know, you said, hey, here is a power hour drinking game. I think it's rather clever. And then it's like, we're out to you, Ali Spagnola. <laughs> Get your spam out of here. Your album sucks, click down. And then you're like, I spent $30,000 defending the uh, trademark of Power Hour. And so now it's free for everyone. And Reddit instantly is like, we have always loved you. You have always been the greatest, our greatest asset. <laughs> like, how do you, how do you, uh, how do you not get annoyed at that BS? I mean, it's fine. I understand where they're coming from. Reddit has this thing about like that. You've even talked about it where like if you steal someone's picture and throw it up on Imager, then you're a hero. But if you talk about your own work that you're really proud of, they hate you. Yes. And so <laughs> um, actually this time someone else again posted about it. And so it was it was nice that to, to get some love from somebody else. I wouldn't have to post myself. You know what you ought to do is you ought to go on a show that's like really plugged in and connected and has like a secret underground network of thousands of individuals who are willing to post your work on your behalf and immediately upvote it, all disclaiming that they have any idea or association with you. It seems like <laughs> that would be really useful. Just saying. <laughs> that might be really useful. <laughs> we may have done that in the past. Yeah. Maybe. Oh, man. Uh, so what has been, like, throughout this entire thing, you dealt with a lot of internet kind of phenomenon, like, what has been the most surprising to you? Like, has it been, like, the way that Reddit's dealt with you? Like, has it been people supporting you more or, like, what? Yeah, it's been the response after this verdict came out because it's way bigger than whenever the first court case out came out. It's way bigger than and any t other press that I've gotten or anything where I've talked about my art before. So it's, I mean, it's great. I just didn't expect people to freak out this much. Yeah. So Has anyone offered to marry you this time? Because that, that was the thing that shocked me the last time when you like really blew up with the Power Hour USB was that I was talking to Brian and actually when we first booked you, I was like. Dude, we're going to have this chick on. She's awesome. And also, apparently the entire internet wants to marry her. There's like no, like, and no one can comment without being like, not like she's hot or I'd like to bang her. <laughs> I want to marry her and bring her to mom. Yeah, well, I've had a lot of marriages since then. It's been a lot of open bars, but I'm really happy with all the, the relationships that I'm in right now. It's great you're doing this full on. Um, uh, oh, damn it, I can't remember. Bro, uh, Robert H. Heinlein, uh, like uh, open marriage family unit of like eight thousand people that you all have uh, love for each other. I, I can't. <laughs> you want to know what you're gonna need to uh, to keep all those marriages alive, Ali? Is a good cell phone. <laughs> Wait a minute. This is true. Go so, on. Oh, 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 because to call it, look, you always bring this up at the weirdest times, Justin. I already told you, man. I'm not down with, you're going to try to sell me on some crappy plan that's going to trap me in some kind of crap 
where I'm going to have to pay for minutes I ain't going to use, data I don't need, and services that I don't even care about. Go ahead. Try it again. But you'll get some kind of kickback in the end, I'm sure. No, Brian. Because that sounds like fart tunes. <laughs> See? And this is Ting. This is a no fart toots mobile service. What? Wait, wait. Are you telling me, wait, uh, Ting, that's the guys uh, behind Two Cows, right? The geeks who really get it, right? Yes, they do really get it. And you know what they don't get? Fart toots in your face. They don't like them. They don't give them. Ting is an MVNO reseller of the Nationwide Sprint Network. All right. So anywhere that Sprint is, Ting is. Now, you're saying this, but these are not actual things that will cause me to... I mean, look, you could say... You could tell me anything has a no fart toots in your face policy, and I'll probably buy it. <laughs> but for somebody who requires a you little... Know, you've seen those, those commercials with AT&T where they're showing the map about fart toots, and they're like, this is the place we won't fart in your face. And then they have, like, the little pockets where you're like, like, well, then I'm totally getting my face farted in, like, <laughs> right in there. It's, it's like a... They're like political attacks. Ads, they were like, Senator Bloody totally farts in your mouth. <laughs> you have to taste that while you vote. Vote for no fart toots, McGee. You'll get no fart toots in your mouth. Pretty sure. But here's the thing if you were going to think about the best way that you could deal with your phone in your life is to have a um, truly, uh, completely contract free, yep. no early termination fees or other BS. No fart toots, Brian. <laughs> Fart Toots, of course, is an acronym for, uh, for, uh, let me figure out. Chat room is going to tell me what Fart Toots for is. For Ting. <laughs> for Ting. Uh, okay, so uh, qu a couple things about Ting. They uh, they have scalable plans that are super simple. Nothing is designed to screw you or trap you. If your grandma wants to be on your family plan and all she's going to do is use the phone, she ain't going to make no text, guess what? Click, clock, clickety, cluke, no Fart Toots. That's their policy. And uh, you get exactly what you want, what you pay for. These are people, this entire company is built on people who are annoyed with the whole practice of forcing people to buy more than they need, and they're not going to do it. They fired off a cease and desist to fart toots. They did. And they won that case. <laughs> they, were, they were granted the trademark of uh, a no fart toots MVNO. <laughs> Boom. Yeah, and it should Martin be pointed Luther out. Martin King once said... I have a dream today that I can get a cell phone plan without fart toots in my mouth. Uh, chat room is pointing out that the uh, that that uh, fart toots is actually for federally allowed roaming ting time over our topography. That's what fart toots stands for. Is no federally allowed roaming ting time over our topography. Listen, here's the deal. Uh, literally everything that annoys you about a cell phone, you ain't got to deal with it with ting. Go on over to ting. Get a Ting phone. You have a no-hold customer support. <laughs> Imagine a customer support where they didn't put you on hold. And it wasn't just 14 hours of sharp, soft jazz and Gore Vidal farting into a Bible. <laughs> so, okay, the other thing that should be pointed out is that you said they're an MVNA reseller, right? MVNO. MVNO. The O stands for, oh, my God, this is a great service. So the MVNO reseller means what they're doing is they're selling the same, the exact same background, uh, uh, backbone that powers uh, those, those other networks that you've heard of. It's the same service, same quality, same bits, only without the screw job. Ting almost, almost, I would imagine, had their slogan being, Ting, no screw jobs. But instead, they went with no fart toots, which is crazy. Uh, and in some markets, they actually, they test it depending on like where you are, but they'll throw in no fart toots, bro. Mobile virtual network operator, all the service, none of the drama or fart toots. That's from Padre SJ in the chat room. Uh, and this is a man who, as the host of This Week in Enterprise Tech, knows what fart toots really do. Here we go. Was, oh, is there a code or a place we should send them? Uh, yeah. Brian, here's what you got to do. You got to go on over to nsfw.ting.com. Oh, yeah. NSFW stands for No Silly Fart Woots. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, go ahead and take the No Fart Toots Pledge. Go to nsfw.ting.com.
<laughs> Can we get t-shirts to say, I'm not doing fart toots because I respect my MVNO. <laughs> no fart toots. <laughs> no fart toots pledge. And then it's like a, it's like a document. It's like a, it's a pledge ring that you wear and people are like, what's that ring? Are you, are you engaged? Like, no, it's my pledge ring. For what? <laughs> no fart toots. I, <laughs> I don't want to deal yeah. with the fart toots with my MDNO. Or MDNO. You have to say it in like that really like kind of like overconfident way. Cause you don't want to seem like you're embarrassed, even though it's kind of like an odd thing to talk about. Like it's because uh, I don't accept fart toots. I, I don't accept him <laughs> from uh, strangers on the street, um, the, the homeless at, at bus depots, or from my MVNOs, and I'm sorry. And some people think it's antiquated, it's old-fashioned, and maybe it is, but uh, no fart toots for me. Bing, ting! <laughs> Holly, where are you at on fart toots in life? <laughs> I have a strict no fart toots policy. <laughs> See, we always knew you were one of the good guys. <laughs> 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 Hold on, let me just do it. There we go. No fart toots for Alex Bagdola. That's. Those are more oh, of the also, insights uh, you can NSW only get. Viewers get twenty five dollars off your first Ting device when you sign up. That's it. Twenty five dollars right. off. Uh, yeah. Hmm. All right. Take it off. The twenty five dollars that is. It's take it off. No um, fart toots. So, Ali, where are you now? Like, what happens uh, if, like, where are you at in the Indiegogo? Where am I at the Indiegogo? I think we just passed 9,000. Yeah, like, where are we at in the time? Got a photo right here. <laughs> there it is. It says, it's not here. Uh, okay, so you're at 9,000, and you've, but, but you've got, uh, how much time do you got? 30 days, about 31 days left. So are you, you must be in the middle of like a giant uh, publicity tour. You're doing a lot of morning radio shows. You, you got a lot of morning DJs, fake and gay early in the mornings coming up. We've got traffic and weather together. Cuckoo the Races Badger coming up at five o'clock. Uh, yeah, bub. I've actually been on several morning radio shows. <laughs> so a power hour, is it? Huh? So what, what, what do you do on a power hour? It says here you drink uh, once a minute. How do you deal with, uh, is your liver all right there, Allie? <laughs> hey now, take your top off. <laughs> Here's Natalie Abrulia. <laughs> does, does, does that make you feel a little com more comfortable? <laughs> um, yeah, what's that like? How many of those have you done? Uh, I've done a few, and not just related to the Indiegogo. I mean, uh, like this through the USB shot glass thing, too. And they're always early in the morning, and I always sound like an idiot. <laughs> You got the croaky like, voice. You don't feel like you do well on them? I'm sorry, what? Dude. You don't feel like you do well on the morning shows? Well, I mean, no, I'm getting better at it. But like, uh, sometimes you just have to be like, yeah, I killed a man. And they can't, <laughs> they can't edit that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah. What's the, have you, ever, have you ever just decided like this one? This, because it's like Groundhog Day, right? Like that's, uh, it's like you just keep going through the same interview over and over and over again and you just think of all the things you wish you could say and maybe you get better at negotiating it. But there's some part of you that wants to have that those moments from Groundhog Day where like, I'm just going to kill a random person, see what happens. And you're like, <laughs> I wake up the next day, everything's fine. Like what's the what's the weirdest you went on one of these interviews? <laughs> uh, probably on this show. <laughs> Good answer. Hold on, let me fix that. Beat, beat, beat it. Can you, uh, do you have one of those scheduled for tomorrow? Can we, can we vote for just, just one, not offensive, just a total non sequitur that you will pledge to drop in one of these interviews? <laughs> okay. Okay. We can make that happen. Okay. Right. Okay. So, so let's, uh, we, we got proposals for the non sequitur. That she'll drop a little diamond club thing. Now, hopefully, you you got to tweet out your your what at Ali Spagnola, what? right? Yes. Okay. Uh, follow Ali Spagnola. She will announce what interview she's about to go do and where you can follow the live stream. In order to <laughs> fart toots, RL died. Murder pills. <laughs> I got it. I got wait, it. Wait, wait. This it. is gonna be that Locking absurd, down. you guys. I'll only do it if you get me up to like ten thousand tonight. Oh. <laughs> All right. All right. But here it is. You have to say, totally non sequitur. I'm uncomfortable with blacks. 
<laughs> Dude, would you, if you wrote a check for $1,000 right now, would you do it? <laughs> You're trying to ruin my career. Yeah, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just asking. I'm just asking questions here. Pierce, 1776 oh. will rise again. Oh, no, no, no. Guess we're going to find out you know, if racist are my target market. Off. You're like, hey, we're still talking about juju peas, right? <laughs> what? No. <laughs> I don't know that following up that statement with juju bees is going to necessarily dig you out of that hole. <laughs> All right. So here's the important question. It's just as far too here, right? Hold on. Somebody has already made a straw poll for this thing. Uh, what should Allie say? Is it fart toots, R.L. Stein, over 10,000? <laughs> over 10,000. Trouble with black. Uh, I can't believe nobody's voted for fart toots. I will totally vote for uh, for fart toots. Look at this happening all real time. This is what I love about the straw poll. By the way, if you uh, are in a chat room, you want to throw up a straw poll. Dan Dirks, I saw some behind the scenes stuff going on, Justin. Mm -hmm. Strawpoll.me doing some traffic, doing some like scary, crazy, oh. very popular traffic. No, uh, strawpoll.me is blowing up. In, in, a, in a big way. Number one, the fact that Dan Dirks doesn't work for like a major Silicon Valley company is an embarrassment to all Silicon Valley companies. That dude is a talent and he always has been and he needs to be working in Silicon Valley. Dan Dirks, for those of you who don't know, is also the genius behind the, uh, the, the back end on the NSFW movie draft. May it rest in peace. It had a good run and was dominated by the best winner. Uh, but uh, he also put together uh, for for us, like like if I remember correctly, we were looking for just some way to ask a question and get instant real time feedback. And with like an annoyed shrug, it was like I could do that. And then before we knew it, he threw together straw poll, became beloved by Twit, and now apparently beloved by the rest of the world. Look at this, this thing just handled. We asked a question, we just got ninety one something votes, all real time tallied, all the way put in there, and they say. You need to drop a, drop a reference to R.L. Stein. Can you do that? Oh, I can make that happen. All right. R.L. Stein. And you got to, uh, you got to, you got to rocket that. Uh, you got to let us know. Twitter.com slash Ali Spags or Ali Spagnola? Ali Spagnola. Sorry. It's, oh, Fart Toots, no R.L. Stein. And it was Fart Toots. Now it's R.L. Stein. <laughs> It's just All right. Well, anyway, you can watch uh, Brian. Give out uh, what's the URL for the straw poll? Uh, looks like strawpoll.me slash sixty four eighty five. Strawpoll.me slash. Well, let's, let's I'll just leave that because you don't have like a morning show tomorrow morning, do you, Ali? Uh, no, nothing coming up yet. All right. Well, then number one, we're gonna book Ali on the morning show, <laughs> <laughs> and she's gonna go on there. And 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 you're gonna uh, uh, drop one of these. Okay, I'll tell you what. Now, now, now. Here's the thing: the morning show thing is a weird circuit because, like, they are constantly looking for news of the weird or something to talk about. So, like, when I launched uh, the Professionals Guide to Fire Eating, I wrote some hyperbolic, like, most dangerous book in the world requires a usage a contract to even open it. Some Professionals Guide to Fire Eating, and it was like uh, that was my first trial by fire, doing like thirty Fun. interviews. I mean, it's. Kind of brutal because they're all they're all asshats, and you start to sense the same rhythm with all of them. And uh, I, I I don't know it was it was it was it was just weird. Like how many of those have you done now? It's a decent amount, and it is a lot of the same questions. But you know my favorite thing is talking about me, so I'm really good at it. <laughs> hey. uh, have you have you been on uh, the the Pittsburgh uh, the Kiss Morning Freak Show? Yeah, they rejected me. I met them in person, even, and they they don't want to have me on. What? Really? Yeah. Wait a minute. They don't. They wouldn't have you. They think they're too cool to interview people. They are only about talking about themselves. But I mean, I love them still. They're really funny. But now they're not. They're not into interviewing. Wow. Because that was the morning show that played me and my brother's stupid rap song. Really? I could probably get you yeah. on. Uh, you know, uh, two or three times I've done uh, <laughs> Dudley and Bob on KBL or KLBJ in Austin. Probably get chilling with those guys. Cool. They're cool. I'd be down. As long as I don't have now, to put now pants we're, on. Now we're fully committed into it. This is like the first time that we that we did the the show with Allie where we had like the morning or not the morning, the the uh the power hour 
And then it ended with us being like, we'll pay for you to come to Austin. And, hang out with us. <laughs> and then we ended the show and completely crapped our pants. Where it's like me and Brett, the two of the three people there who knew the most about what it takes to put on live events and, and negotiate travel and, and get people to come out to live events, were just totally losing it. And Justin Robert Young was like, come on, guys, whatever. It's just the middle of South by Southwest in the middle of downtown Los. Come on, it'll be fine. And then it was like almost with chagrin, Brett and I were like, pretty much was fine. That uh, that you were correct, Justin, and we were not. That was totally correct, and I totally booked the venue for zero dollars in the middle of Sixth Street, in the middle of South by Southwest, the biggest, most popular time of the entire year when nobody can get anything. It was amazing. Yeah, like so amazing. I bet you couldn't do it twice. <laughs> you know what? It is coming up. In fact, Zach Holder, Zach Holder just texted me. And I like the fact that he did what we call in, oh, I'm sorry, say it, uh, last thing you said, say it again there, Allie. I bet you couldn't do it twice. Zach Holder did uh, what salesmen call uh, assuming the sale, which I thought was brilliant. I've got a text message from him <laughs> that says, uh, it was like we hadn't chatted in a month or so, and he sends me this text that says, well, I got it all, uh, I got my uh, tickets all lined up. Uh, five days in Austin for South by South Wasted. Uh, South by South Wasted. <laughs> totally excited. And then just like no question to it. No like it's happening this year. No like anything. And I was just like, yeah, <laughs> let's do this. So I think we might have to make a bit of a tradition here. I would totally be down. So, all right, but how do we take it to the next level? Like, what is what is South by So Wasted 2? If we are crafting it right here, like Heroin. artisans, what what is what is the 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 big hook? Methamphetamines. That's usually my answer to most things. Hold on, somebody's got a suggestion for us. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't know why. Somebody just said this like like for no apropos of nothing. A Photoshop of me as uh Sylvester Stallone. Over Twitop. <laughs> uh, so there's there's that. If that's what you look for. I don't know what I don't know what to take it to the next level. Because last time we did, we had the Go Game. We had uh you and me, we had Ali Spagnola. Oh. Also, we're gonna have another go game. Wait, did you just decide this? Did you just write this right now? No, yeah. I've actually been planning it, but I haven't told anybody. Uh, okay, so so I guess we can announce. Uh, I mean, Allie, are you free in mid March? Would you like to join us for another South by So Wasted? Uh, well, I I mean, I'm running this Indiegogo to try and figure out where my tour should be. I'm just thinking if I. So what you're saying is that as you have already committed to let the people determine if the people of Indiegogo, the donators who go to indiegogo.com slash power hour and give a donation, maybe if they were to suggest that Austin, Texas would be a rad place for you to go, then they could negotiate the time and place and you would come and do another power hour? You'd make that happen. Mm. I think I should probably just assume that everybody wants Austin if they're going to donate from now until the end of the show. Yeah, that's fair <laughs> enough for me. Let's take a look and uh, see where you're at here. This is, uh, uh, I don't see an update. That's weird. It still says only one customer review. No, uh, don't do that one. Do the USB one. Oh, the, the Indiegogo one. Yeah, there you go. Uh, uh, yes. And by the way, all right, so the Go game, it's a different Go game. It's not the same one as we did last time. It's actually way more show-friendly, and it might be worth heavily recruiting uh, from the Spill.com Cargill camp. Oh, my God. Yeah, Cargill, who we bumped for this week's episode. Uh, I don't know if I told you that, Allie. We yeah, definitely thanks. suck it, writer of Sinister. <laughs> yeah, so long. Uh, oh, I don't know the author. He's got a brand new book that's coming out as well that uh, is way exciting. But uh, but we definitely bumped him for you. Because uh, well, tell him way, I said thank you and thank I you guys owe, too. Sure. I owe, when I come to Austin, I owe you and Cargill. It's a steak dinner on old gerbs. Yeah. Well, you already gave me a steak, right? No, I owe you another steak. For what? What was this steak? Bet? I've won so many of them from you. It's hard for me to remember. Oh, that's right. That's right. It was the same steak bet. For me, that I won. America's 
butcher <laughs> Justin Robert Young has yeah. distributed but, meat across this great yeah, land. Yeah, you bet a stake not only that Obama would lose, but that he would lose specifically to Romney. And you did this, and you did this before the Republican uh, candidate was established. And I almost look smart. Yeah, almost. Five seconds after the first debate. Sure. <laughs> All right, here we go. I'm I'm donating right now to indiegogo.com slash power hour. So Justin, you're gonna have to wrap up this interview. Woo! -hoo. Allie, we've asked you a lot of questions. I feel like we've gone on uh about 40% of this journey as a regular interview, and then we started drinking more, and then it just became a hodgepodge of nonsense. What would you like to tell people? What would you like to have them know after hearing all this? Uh, I would like them to know that they are free to power hour and it is awesome. And it's because That's what they of me. get out all of this. And then say, and then say, but say, and it's because of me. Yeah, clearly I'm the hero in all this. I mean, that's true. That's not even an exaggeration. Uh, <laughs> to this day, as you become, uh, and rightfully so, the queen of debaucherous, hilarious drinking games. Okay, can we, can we talk about that real quick? Like, like, did you ever consult with the lawyer about the liability side of things on the drinking? Like, have you figured out? There's, yeah, I mean, he's saying that I should get people to sign waivers or like do no, deals with the venues. No. I mean, it, it probably will get to that point, but haven't done anything yet. Yeah, well, but, but it's like, there's no reason it can't scale to that. You can play the power hour utterly responsibly. You can play without even getting drunk. In fact, you can play it and flush out your colon and be healthier as a result of playing the power hour game. It's just yeah. a matter of what you choose to play it with. I know, and I try and encourage people that everybody wins, you know, it's not about finishing all 90 ounces. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so there. But as this reputation grows and you have this, this Paul Bunyan-like reputation of being the most awesome person in the world to party with, for which is true, as we've all partied with Allie, we can say it is an absolute uh, a, a pinnacle of your life when she comes to your town and you have the Allie Spagnola party. But it also makes my heart warm when I remember during Dragon Con, when at like nine in the morning, when I opened a beer and a half asleep <laughs> Ali Spagnuolo would just roll over and go, oh God, really? <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna lie, dude. Uh, Dragon Con, say what you will about what it, one of its co-founders may or may not have done. Legitimately, one of the no, greatest moments of my life. Didn't do, we don't support him, but whatever. He's done. Dragon Con's the best. Yeah, no, we had uh, in one room, it was uh, Ashley and Justin and Chad and Brian and Ali Spagnola and Brett Rounceville. And I feel like there was another one in there as well. Andrew for a night. Andrew Maine as well. And uh, uh, John Tilt was almost scheduled to be in the same room. So it was like, it was a flop house that we were running. But uh, but that was, that was an amazing time. And in fact, Allie, like one of my most precious memories at that time was sitting around and brainstorming and talking about how the gap between the potential for the power hour and and you know what the, and the stuff you had to deal with to get there, including little things like I don't know, destroy the copy the trademark owner <laughs> before you could be free to, to to run with it. Like how much of that factored into the calculus of you? Because like it's hard to want to quit your day job and commit full time to something that uh, that is an outrageous idea to begin with. But on top of that, when you have a villain who's full on committed, who said every moment of every day, I will not rest until I have taken down your materials at all turns, like how much of that makes it in, into your mind when you're trying to, to, to work stuff out? Yeah, there's definitely a lot of doubt in my mind all the time, but like it's awesome to hear everyone's support online and talking to you and like realizing that you've done something equally as awesomely, ridiculously awesome. And so, um, and the help that you gave me with the the sizzle reel, even like that was huge. So. Sizzle reel is pretty dope. It actually came out really, really well. In fact, actually, is it? Uh, I saw part of it in here. Let's go here. Let's go ahead and and just show some rocking awesome Ali Spagnola here. Should I jump forward to some part? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, like the sizzle reel stuff sort of towards of fighting for your right to party. I have a huge announcement. Wait, you don't know about my absurd three-year legal battle? Okay. 
Here's the quick story. My name is Ali Spagnola and I'm a musician. In 2009, a guy named Steve Roos started threatening to sue me, saying I had to stop playing Okay, now, I noticed that you use Steve Roos's name specifically and repeatedly. <laughs> How much of that? Like, what, what do you have to think of before you're just like, I'm going to use this guy's name a lot? <laughs> well, I have to think that his name is all over the legal documents that are now publicly published. So screw you, I'm going to use your name. There you go. There's that. Stop selling my album. Why, you ask? Well, because one, this guy is a giant <laughs> hat, and two, because my <laughs> album is based on a drinking game that Steve claimed he owned. It's a common drinking game called a power hour. For my concerts, I perform 60 original one-minute songs, and the audience takes a shot of beer every time I change the music. My live drinking game concerts are an interactive freaking blast, and I sell my album loaded on a shot glass USB that I invented. Steve Roos made a PowerPoint that burps every minute and sold it as a DVD. Uh. So Steve decided to- is that, is that true? Like that's literally all it did was just burp? You know what? No, it actually fart tooted every minute. Well, there's that. <laughs> now I'm going to think of that as the fart toot sound. Marked the term power hour and started bullying a ton of people online saying it was his game. Legal documents ruined my buzz. He got power hours taken off of YouTube, websites and software taken down, and had my album removed from Amazon. Okay, oh yeah, now wait a minute. So so there's other victims in this. Like, do you know some of the other victims out there? Have you guys shared yeah, like a celebratory? I'm with them now. To how many, how many would you say there are that you know closely? Um, there is like a, a good handful of them that I haven't even met and that or that other people that have posted on Reddit about it. But the ones that I'm good friends with are uh, this guy named Pete Berg, who runs PowerHourHQ.com and a guy who runs the iPowerHour software, which I used all throughout college. And I'm sure a lot of people have heard of, too. It's like the most popular PowerHour software. It just hooks into your iTunes. And he had to take his site down and stop distributing his, his stuff. Dude. Uh, by the way, uh, listen, this is kind of embarrassing. Uh Steve Roos is in the chat room. Right what? Now and no. Uh, said, uh, I was is. the one who told Glee to use Jonathan Colton's cover of Baby Got Back without crediting him. It says here, like, I was I the mystery sure assassin. That he would be taking credit for that. <laughs> I was the mystery assassin that shot JFK. Wow. Look That's... at this, Steve Roos. I smell my own farts. <laughs> wow. Just really weird. Uh, uh, <laughs> what, a, what an odd thing that he would come here this guy to admit. Was literally those on a rampage to stop people from partying. Are you kidding me? So I took him to court to free power hours for everyone. It ended up taking three years and cost me over thirty thousand dollars. Yes, I understand this sounds absolutely nuts. I had no idea it would take all that. <laughs> Steve Roos kept prolonging okay, the case. Okay, real quick, real quick. At what point, Allie, do you find yourself editing this video and uh, and find your, part of your career and job to be in a mic? And then, like, you know, let me get it just greasy enough. There we go. Perfect. And then you're like, that's the one that's going to make me 40 grand. Let's do this. <sighs> Getting paid for sound effect fart toots is my dream. <laughs> and now I'm making it a reality. Fair enough. To purposefully drain my money, all while he paid nothing. This guy is literally an internet villain. <laughs> and I imagine in person he is so crotch kickable. Okay, now that we've established that Steve Roos is a dumb head crap face and I'm pretty great, it's time for the huge <laughs> announcement. I bet you can see where this is going. Power, power. Suck it, Steve. The court has just ruled in my favor. I win. The nation wins. No one can own power hour. Documents. Documents saying how right I am. So it's time for a victory lap. And that's what this campaign is about. I want to bring my power hour concerts to you so we can celebrate their freedom together. Wait, so you called it a global party from the beginning. Like, you, uh, that wasn't ironic or like, let's just call it a global party. You're like, let's send freedom to all the masses. Like, when we you, will export our freedom across the globe. When you wrote those words, how much of you really believed that the, you'd be getting like like England would be one of the top voters? Uh, not very much of me at all. And it's still not looking like a possibility <laughs> just because we're pretty far into it. But it's fine. I mean, I, that is my dream is a global party. But I understand that I need to be more realistic unless something happens pretty big. So we'll see. But <laughs> Hannah did it. She got went global with hers. Yeah, man. This is where I take eight seconds to show you how ridiculously sweet my shows are. One, two, three, let's go. Yeah, this is Fishy Song. Let's go. 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 Let's go.
You need to experience this concert. Help me fund a Power Hour Freedom Victory Tour. I have a dream to create a global party, and you can make it happen. This will be one, a lovely little up yours to trademark bully ass hats, and two, an okay, awesome- did you take like new photos just for this that say stuff like America and uh, <laughs> and because uh, that's a pretty sweet picture. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> well, I don't actually have that shirt or those glasses. That's a Photoshop job. I'm no! sorry. To- <laughs> I'm so you just broke my heart because I thought you went and made all of these happen just for the photo shoot. I know, I'm such a bummer. I mean, I did take that picture, but my shirt didn't say America. She's way less built. Is it is that true? I took a picture of my dad and then no, it's me. <laughs> Okay, so those are your eyes. You can make it happen. This will be one, a lovely little up yours to trademark bully ass hats, and two, an awesome party that you need to be a part of. My goal is to hit 20 cities, and I'll add more if I can raise more money, or I'll have to take some away if I can't get you excited enough to get up and get your credit card. When you contribute, you also get a vote for which city you want my tour to hit. There's even a $1 level so everybody can vote. I shall vote. I will go wherever the most enthusiastic Power Hour players are. Woo! This campaign is about raising funds and raising excitement. I need people to show up and party once I am on tour. So please share it with everyone ever. Then I'll be able to come high five the crap out of you in person. $1 to vote for your city also gets you a download of my whole Power Hour album. Okay, now was there any part of you that hesitated on that? Because that's the weird part is in the age of digital distribution, it's not so much like... Okay, when everybody, when it was a pain in the butt to print things and press CDs and so on, it's like, I just want my stuff out there. So it was easier to say, yeah, whatever, a dollar, let's just make it happen. But nowadays, it's there's the calculus of, am I screwing myself over? Am I, am I losing $10,000 next month because I'm interested in giving everything away for a dollar now? How much of that did you worry about? Or was it just like knee jerk, like just, you know, get it out there, a dollar, sure, great. Yeah, no, I'm still freaked out about it. And who knows? And what if all those people that are paying a dollar would have paid five and I would have five times as much and could go to so many more cities? But whatever, we'll see how it goes. Steve Roos's mom is in the chat now, unfortunately, <laughs> saying, saying, I hate my son. <laughs> you see, all right. Here we go. Steve Roos's mom saying, I hate my son. <laughs> Amazing. He also gets you a download of my whole Power Hour album. Despite the fact that my lyrics are hilarious and this album has a built-in party, the music is still legit. I spent two years crafting songs that I know you'll like, even if you aren't smashed. This super huge deal is a part of my plot to make you fall in love with my music, play my drinking game with your friends, and then want to experience it live. So go ahead, fall for it. Speaking of loving my music, I have other albums you can get in the perks. Yes, I'm a musician, not just a drunk. All right, so we should point out, like, your mom, like, uh, your mom, we talked about this, your mom would really like it if you would make music that wasn't about drinking. Is that true? This is correct. She is slightly embarrassed by my career choice. Uh, she can't embrace, <laughs> she can't embrace wait, what, wait, wait, what does she say to you? What is, what is an average conversation between Allie and Mother Spagnola? <laughs> It's like, I think you've had enough. And I say, I'll tell you when I've had enough. <laughs> now, I've noticed you, okay, I've noticed and enjoyed a number of tweet sessions from Ali Spagnola on Twitter. Uh, who you should follow? Ali Spags, right? Ali Spagnola. Spagnola, right. Forget Ali Spag. I never said that. <laughs> uh, but but uh, is there a little bit of putting on a show on that channel? Or, or are you like, uh, there are times I'm just like, there's no way she just knocked down that much. I mean, it's like, it's epic to watch your your tweet streams. Well, I remember last weekend that I tweeted I drank 5 million beers, and I'm pretty sure that was just drunk me exaggerating. So, yeah, I guess you're right. It probably wasn't 5 million. It was probably like four and a half. Million. Four and a half million. Okay. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> Is it, does Power Hour Outlet have its own Twitter? It does not yet. Really? He's getting, oh, he's, you can't see him, but... does now. <laughs> yeah, dude, I Someone guarantee Someone's going to make one. <laughs> he says hi. I get, there's Power Hour Outlet, uh, who became famous, of course, from your YouTube video. All right, here Shot we go. Shot glass USB. This creation is my baby. The music comes on here, and you can literally drink out of my album while you play the game. And look awesome doing it. I have a separate project where I create paintings based on people's requests. Over five years and almost 2,000 paintings. Let me create one for you as thanks for your contribution. I swear it's fine art. I even have an art degree. Also, that project and the fact did, wait, that Wait, did you graduate patented. from Carnegie Mellon? Yeah, I graduated from there. I have a BFA in art. That's awesome. 
Thanks. And manufactured this invention means I'm not just a crazy party. Wait a minute. Patrick Delahanty in the chat room says he has a real Ali Spags pa uh, painting. That's phenomenal, man. Yeah, a few You're chat right, roomers do, actually. I've got my life together. Look, I'm just trying to prove that I won't only spend your money on beer. Some of it will go to ice cream for dinner. And toys. And silly helmets. What I do is gaining a ton of momentum. Internet and magazine articles. I've been on podcasts, radio, and TV. Whoa, 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 whoa. What was that? Hold on. Some of it will go to ice cream for dinner. And toys. And silly helmets. So there's a helmet. There's gaining mm -hmm. momentum. What I do is gaining a ton of momentum. Internet and mag. Okay, Gizmodo, New York Post. I recognize Gizino those. Article. I've been on no, yeah, there's Huffington Post comedy, sure. Podcast. What? Ah! <laughs> Amazing. And TV, my show. And then you, I think these you show up again rest. when I was at uh, Dragon Con. Oh, shoot, yeah. My business. My oh, there you are. Dude, this is amazing. Fans are growing. My time is now. This is my shot. Pun. <laughs> yeah, this I just my left shot, my safe pun. career to pursue music full time. Making music and parties for a living is my dream, and now I'm fully committed to making it happen. I'm excited and terrified, and I have nothing forcing me to put pants on ever again. I'm great. In the chat, Steve Roos points out that he hates shots. So just there's that. <laughs> Steve Roos, always the he troll. Your Everybody to know Steve's all not. of this. Power Hour is free. Let's party together. Crap, I could have done this video in three seconds. Also, thanks. Dude. Now, uh, Brian, you were saying that um, uh, P. Delahenty has a Ali Spagnola painting? Yeah. Yep. You know who else does? Allie, she's got a lot Future of them. Future Justin, because I just spent $100 on Allie Spagnola's Indiegogo, and I want you as well to make sure you throw some money into that Indiegogo. All right, you know what? I'll tell you this much. We're actually right now, it's at, uh, hold on, let me, did you just click it just then? It's at, it's at 96.11, which means we only have $389. I'm going to tell you this much. We're not, wait. This is weird because I was going to say, we're not ending the show until we cross one, one th 10,000. But then knowing these guys, they'll be all like monk-like vow of silence. They're like, well, then we'll wait because we enjoy your show and we would like it to, to continue. Seriously, let's just knock this thing out of the park. Let's get, let's get her over $10,000 and then she'll say, what, two farts or, or R.L. Stein in her next interview and send it over <laughs> to us. It was R.L. Stein, but has it changed? Okay, well, you know what? Uh, I don't let's, know. Let's go. It is updating live, Brian. Uh, let's go ahead and check. Touche. I, I don't have it here anymore. <laughs> I'll have to find it. But uh, people are pointing out, wow, did you make this for, for Vincent 404? You made him a painting that's now yeah. his avatar? I did not realize that was you. That's phenomenal. Yeah, that's him. Dude, that's awesome. Thanks. Glad you like. All right. Well, so uh, I'm not saying that we will, but theoretically... Would you say both Fart Toots and R.L. Stein <laughs> in an interview? I'm just saying, let's just up the ante a little bit. Let's try to just work it in and let us know when it's coming up. And you're mm -hmm. committing to just, <laughs> like, like you have to let us know before you go live on the interview <laughs> over Twitter, uh, twitter.com slash Ali Spagnola, and, and we will all tune in live and we will listen as you try to work in Fart Toots and R.L. Stein. All right, I'll do my best. <laughs> yes, amazing. <laughs> Holy cow, we got now. So do you you take requests on all of, all of these paintings? Yeah, whatever you want me to paint. I've done almost two thousand of them now. I'm not about to break the two thousand barrier. Such amazing. All right, here so we wait, go. like, was this like another thing? Like, like in in an alternate universe, could like, were, are you the free painting girl? Yeah, I am. Uh, to other circles on the internet, the free painting girl. I've been doing that for five years. So I've mailed them amazing. all over the world. All right, here we go. Let's tune back in. Uh, sorry, I'm clicking back over here. I'm trying to see. This is one of those times where it's like we just want to see some magic happen. What? Nobody's donated? And unfortunately, like, all the comments I, I, are... I think that there's there's a problem with this thing. No. I oh, feel with, like it's not... With updated. the updating? Yeah. Yeah. I know I... Because uh, you definitely updated. You definitely... I don't think... I, I think it was that, that number when I donated 100. Yeah, I'm gonna keep hitting. Oh, wait, there we go. Seven twelve. There we go. Somebody donated a dollar, and to that person, we say you're totally rad, and you definitely don't hate freedom. Uh, all right. Well, look. Let's go ahead and start wrapping things up here. Maybe we'll hit there by the end. Maybe we won't. But in the meantime, 
I just got an update that I just paid a hundred dollars to binge responsibly LLC. Thanks. I wonder. I wonder who that could be. Uh, let me let me just throw a plug out. Tomorrow I'm going to be at uh, Rutgers University in Camden, New Jersey. So if you're in the New Jersey area, hit me up over Twitter, Twitter.com/slash/schwood. Uh, Justin, you got any? Oh, uh, dude, I almost forgot. Got to thank the people who are making this upgraded live stream possible. And we're still working out the kinks. You may have noticed a little bit of herky jerks. Hopefully we'll have everything worked out, but we should be able to have consistent, high quality, uh, better resolution, better everything live stream. Thanks to our friends over at Doghouse Systems. Doghouse Systems were the folks who promoted Game on. They did the double your memory promotion and they are sponsoring this studio right here. They hooked us up with a monster PC that is called uh, the Max Trollbox. The art on the side looks like Max Trollbot. If you remember, it's amazing. Uh, uh, and what they're doing is they're setting up with a promo code, promo code Schwood, S-H-W-O-O-D. And it'll get you, first of all, you'll get free art on the side of the Max Trollbox, which looks amazing. So you can configure your own Max Trollbox. Uh, and normally is like a hundred plus dollars, plus also uh, about a hundred dollars worth of loot from scamstuff.com. So you get to, I know you get the scam pack, you get a special uh, limited edition DVD that's not even for sale, or it's actually a two DVD set, uh, digital copies of all of my books in there as well. Uh, but uh, promo code uh, Schwood on Doghouse Systems. Dot com. So there's that. Justin. Get all it in your life. So there. Uh, what, what do you got to promote? Uh, no, not a whole hell of a lot, man. Um, of course, Justin R. Young on uh, Twitter. I think I might have. I might be close to. Dude, 10, you're like 000. four away from 10,000. In fact, I remember seeing that, and I wanted to make it happen tonight. Twitter.com. No, I have 10,018. Oh, dude. So we, we don't care about that old number. another 9,000, whatever. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, no, I don't know. Uh, go get the new, the, 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 the me yelling at things. Oh, no, no, no. Me and Brett. Me and Brett are doing a, a, a podcast where we're doing through, like, beta stuff. I think there could be something really, really fun, including Allie. Uh, who was, uh, said she might uh, uh, give us a, a theme song. This um, is not a might. This is a guarantee. <laughs> all right, we're guaranteed a theme song. Uh, but I think that there's there's a lot of fun elements to uh, this me and Brett podcast where uh, it actually kind of has turned into more of a travel podcast. So if you like Brett with the Amtrak thing, this is kind of like a weird sort of spiritual sort of successor to, to Amtrekker because it's a lot of him on the road and a lot of me on the road and hopefully a song from Ali eventually. But go ahead and listen to the beta episodes we've done. Go to my SoundCloud, soundcloud.com slash Justin Robert Young. So this and, is uh, all... Let us know what you think. This is all audio-based, the podcast primarily? All audio, yeah, yeah. No, it's just going to be us talking. And also, I think well, something that I want to do is have a part of it just be... Like me and him talking to each other, like on the road, like on the phone, because like I feel like if it's all going to be audio, then you like there's a lot of times where I just want to like yell about something that's happening on the road, and I would call Brett and yell about it. So now you you call and record it instantly. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what. Hold on, I'm looking at and this. Force America and uh, international uh, listeners to deal with it. Uh, I'll tell you what, man, we are very, very close. We are now refreshing now 857. 857, so 143. Wait, I want to up the ante right now. If we hit if we hit 10k, I will I will commit to coming to South by So Wasted. What? Oh! You're saying that Austin can jump the line. We'll definitely make it happen. We'll definitely have you here in Austin. Oh, my gosh. I will be there. All right, here we go. Let's take a look. Refreshing 9,990 or 22. We are uh, $78 away. All right, look, all you ass has, just give a dollar. Just give a dollar. Let's get <laughs> oh, this thing Brian. done. Brian, I'll tell you what. I, I can hear the, the, the ending. <laughs> oh, sorry. That was the wrong music. You're talking about, you're, say, you're wondering if we can actually make it happen Right here at the very end, as, as I'm we just wrap saying, everything Brian, up. Listen, uh, we're running out of time here. You know, 
It's uh, I'm, I I actually I, I pressed it a while ago. It's for some reason it's locking up. So I don't, this uh, this is not the right music. This is the wrong music entirely. Oh no, I don't have the right music. <laughs> we'll have to listen. We we'll have to go out with the belt music. <laughs> so there's the. <laughs> it's so frantic. The belt music is all we have. Nine forty two. Oh, nine point two. All right. Well, I guess it's not gonna happen. It was a good run. Love you guys in chat realm. Thank you so much. We almost did it. We almost got Ali Spagnola here, but apparently it was $58. You know, was... there's one thing that chat realm's known for. It's going 99% of the way and then quitting. That's what I remember about chat realm. They were always like, they were always good to get most of the way there. And then they'd sort of give up and nothing would happen. Yeah. There's always like, hey, let's go ahead and really, really sacrifice for something up until the point where it kind of happens. And then say, eh. And then like, eh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we did just go up by $1. 947. All right, I guess that's it for this episode of NSFW, the show. The episode that'll be forever remembered as 53. the one. One where we almost brought Alex Pagnola to South by So Wasted. Uh-oh. Here. People are saying that it's over 10,000. I'm pressing refresh, and it's definitely not showing me that. It's definitely <laughs> not that I got a problem. I'm just saying. Definitely hitting refresh. I mean, so am I. I guess this is the end of so long. <laughs> Tuesday. Die in the fire. Look at that manual fade. That's good. Thank you, Allie. Thank you. That was amazing, dude. That was amazing. <laughs> good, good show. <laughs>